Good evening. My name is Pete Nickel, and I thank you, Diane Jackman, and the uh, Healing Light Spiritualist Church of Edna, Maine, for giving me this opportunity to do this little uh, speech or talk tonight, written by Cora L. V. Richmond. Okay, um, I found this in the uh, Progressive Thinker, dated October 23, 1937, uh, a note of interest, Cora passed into the spirit world in 1923, so I don't know exactly when this discourse that she wrote was actually given. She was real active in the late 1890s in San Francisco. It could have been then. So uh, the title of this discourse is Spirits Cannot Control Human Destinies. The light divine may gleam through ministering spirits according to your need. Okay, that's the whole gist of this whole story. And then she takes it and she expounds upon it. And I'm going to try to read it in a cadence that that will be fit for it. Okay, so um, I shortened it a little bit, but I did not change her words. And here we go. The arrival of the gods is what men covet, but instead of the gods arriving, it is man who arrives at the state of perceiving the gods. Guardian angels cannot alter nor take away any suffering or any joy that is necessary. But this they can do whenever you are ready to receive the word, the admonition, or accept their ministration. They can pour their light and life as they may have been doing for years without your knowing it upon you until you awake to the consciousness that their love has enfolded you around about all the time. You meet no individuals by chance when seemingly two lives come together and they become friends. They say, what a happy accident was our meeting. How strange that we should have so casually and accidentally met. Ages gone before yet they were aware of breath, perchance two souls that were to become friends on earth wing their way from the throne of light together, accompanied by angels, entered the mortal state and divided for a time. Wherefore, all these ages destined to struggle till they might meet. This is why when you meet with such a friend, you say, it seems as though I have known you forever. Could anything but destiny or predestination, that prescience within the soul that marks such destiny. Have known in this life, this friendship would thus be recognized. Then those who disturb you, who are discordant to you, whom you say you are alien to, do not think you meet them by chance. This is wisely ordered for the discipline, self-control, patience, and charity which are needed in the enfoldment of earthly life. You meet the disturbing elements for the vanquishment of temptation. How could you ever know that you had vanquished it if you were not tempted? Things do not tempt people as much more vulnerable on its human than on its merely earthly side. The dust has no, not so great a temptation nor even gold. It is what man can do with gold, what man may think. It is this that constitutes its power over mankind. This is why gold is made the final temptation of the senses, because man through display and pride and a life of obstination desires to become exalted above his fellows. Gold is made the test of this condition. Do not think a chance if one man has gold and another has not. The great millionaires of the world are not so by chance. That grinds the poor man down to the level of his toil and in the weary treadmill of daily labor makes him feel that he is a galley slave. Not so great a slave as the one who is bound to the great mammon birth of gold. 
One day he sees it even though he does not see it in the day when he toils. When he is oppressed, he sees it at another time. But you say our fate for good or ill seems to strongly influence by those about us. We seem to be accompanied. We may even date our misfortune to certain associations. If the misfortune were not in you, if you did not contain the elements that produce it, how could another individual create it? If you could not be tempted, there would be no tempter. If you could if you can be made miserable, unhappy, wretched by others, then others can have an influence over you. There are those over whom they have no effect, not because of a difference in circumstances, but a difference in individual states. Be sure that you never meet with a trial because of anything that you do not need. You never meet with a trial at the hand of an individual that you do not need. No soul can experience mortal life alone. No one can withdraw himself from association with his fellows without experiencing such poverty as hermits have felt, as those who concealing themselves in caves, having hoped to escape from the temptations and sorrows of the world have been gnawed in spirit by the bitterness of their own isolation. There is no greater tempter than that which is within, and the experiences with your fellow beings is not only to lead you to vanquish temptation while you are here, but to know why you vanquish it, and also to teach that surpassing charity as comes to those who have overcome temptation. No, you cannot spare any individual experience that you meet, and all whom you meet arrive or you arrive at contact with them for discipline and experience. Count it not an accident that may have thrown a demon in your way, else how could you understand that state and guard against and overcome it? Count it not an accident that throws an angel along the pathway of your life. There is no accident. You have journeyed thus far and the angel from the opposite pathway to meet. In early years of life you may see many young people turn to each other, but one proves to be what is called the fate of the other. This is no accident. It is not even choice in experience. It is not chance. It is the kind of experience that will be needed in the pathway of life together. Do not mistake all existence as being essentially for happiness. If you only existed here for happiness, you would never have left the Father's house above. You exist here for expression, for experience, for discipline, or for that happiness which is born of victory and conquest over self. No human life can take from you that experience. No one can add more than they are destined to, to that experience, which is to be met and fulfilled. Each human life is a factor in the experience of all. As trembling through space, no star so remote that it is not dependent upon other stars, or as worlds are swung in their orbits to the same plane by the destiny of their impulsion, all governed by the same laws. So too in human affairs, you meet and commingle and exchange thoughts. Today you frown upon one and tomorrow smile another. That frown will meet you at another place and time, perhaps perhaps to teach you the value of a smile. That smile may be of bitterness at another place to teach that you should not have frowned upon another. Individual lines of life are interblent. 
Each pathway crosses the other, and the lesson to be learned is that which comes of perfect conquest over self, of seeing the universe not through your own eyes, from a self-centered point merely, but seeing it as intended for the whole human family in their expressions of the soul. God does not mean that his universe shall revolve around one individual. One soul cannot appropriate all the light there is in the universe. The light is for all. Infinite love is for all. Infinite blessing is for all. And whatever seeming shadow crosses mortal life, God encompasses every soul eternally. Spirits cannot control human destinies or change them, nor bend them from the primal orbit of their first impulsion. The light divine may gleam in and through ministering spirits according to your need. No spirit can teach you if you are not teachable. If you are teachable, they are your teachers. No one can influence your life unless you can be influenced by them. The mother's love that may not be of any value while here may be changed into a heavenly treasure by what you call death. Thus the mother becomes a portion of your destiny, which she was not while here because unheeded and the awakener death has made you aware of her love. How blessed then was the death that seems so sad. Those who are guardian spirits cannot alter human destiny, cannot change the pathway of human life, cannot make you other than you are. But at the time when their strength is needed, it is given. When their love is needed, it is there. When you are hungry, the food is ready. When you are not hungry, no one can compel you to eat. So with the spiritual blessings that are in existence. Ministration is but an added step of human life. It is that larger household and more exalted community, a greater humanity. And this larger humanity has control over existence only according to its wisdom. And that wisdom is not intended to divert your destiny, but is a portion of it. What it is to you individually must depend upon your individual state and condition. As the sunshine cannot change a thistle into a lily, so a ministering spirit cannot change those who are in a state of shadow into a state of light until they are ready for the light. But when they are ready, it is blessed to know that the light is always there. Thus it is with guardian angels, who from the very hour of birth watch over each human destiny and aid in carrying forward that destiny. They do not change it, but are in sympathy with it. They are part of it. And though they see the shadow into which human life must plunge, it is given to no guardian angel to change that shadow into light until it is changed from within. Have no fear that any spirit or angels will either take your individuality from you or live your life for you. Neither will they bear your crosses, nor will they take the blame for your shortcomings, nor are they responsible for your failures, but they make you see after the failure has taught its lesson that sometimes in defeat there is the grandest triumph. He who considers that it is the business of the guardian spirits and angels to ward off personal sorrow and personal misfortune would do well to remember that the day will come when he will praise God more for the discipline of that sorrow than, than any joy that the earthly life can give. Let no man think that he has either baffled destiny or that destiny has made a mistake in his case. 
the very hopelessness and helplessness of some lives is the greatest proof of destiny. It is a promise of that, that which is weakness shall become strength, that which is shadow will become light. For the life that seems to be aimless and purposeless is as precious in the sight of heaven as the most brilliant life. Think not that the meteor that flashes along the earthly sky with intellect, wealth, splendor, and power is more favored of God and the destiny than that poor soul that clings to the sound of music or follows one voice, perhaps the voice of the mother. Think not that the lowest child of earth is of any less value in the sight of destiny than he who, like Jove, commands the lightning and rules the skies. Turn shadowward toward the earth, and many lives seem obscured. The best ones almost are clouded with some obliquity. But in all eternity, no soul finds preference over another, and all have equal opportunity. Do not believe that God has so ordered the universe that some souls shall straightway gaze into heaven and mount triumphantly in their course into the ethereal regions, while others from mere helplessness shall be stranded upon the shoals and quicksands of time. As eternity moves on and the great cycles are revealed and unfolded, he who is helpless shall become strong, he who is in shadow shall enter into light, and all the possibilities that he feels within him shall have time, chance, and opportunity for expression. There is but one destiny for every soul, immortality. There is but one pathway to that destiny in any life, conquest. He who overcometh shall have great treasures, that every failing is to be overcome, and all error and striving vanquished by the light from within the soul. What other destiny could there be than that light that conquers darkness? The time will be in the great and final victory when all lives will be found to be merged in completeness and all souls will mount to their glorious inheritance and final destiny as triumphantly as saints and angels do who have conquered all strife who have overcome all shadow, and who stand in the light of that divine presence forever. The end. Well, that was cool. <laughs>